Okay. Okay. So Norma, um, I'd like to hand over to you and uh, um, you've got the floor. Uh, okay, thank you so much, Marcia. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Bame, for this awesome privilege of being um, the um, guest speaker tonight. So I wanted to share with you um, seven powerful keys for success in business. Um, just some things that have really worked for me in my experience, um, you know, in the last 18 years as a uh, jewellery designer. So uh, some of you I already know, but I was born in Birmingham. Um, so I was born and brought up in, in Handsworth. Um, and um, I started out, um, I suppose one of the first things I did after leaving school was I worked as a, as a fashion model. And then um, after having my children, I studied business and marketing. And then I started the Silverfish Company. Yeah, so it's 18 years ago now. There have been many highs and many lows. And um, I think most of you are in full-time business. So I guess you know what I'm talking about. I don't know how long you've run your businesses. But um, as I say, I've been running mine for um, 18 years. And... Um, before I started the company, I worked as a lecturer in business. I worked at my local college, uh, which is Sutton Coldfield College, um, teaching GCSE and A-level. Mute, mute if you're not speaking, please. Michelle, yeah, yeah, I don't, oh, sorry. Yeah, so um, I also, you know, worked as a business studies tutor as well, which I think... Um, some of the principles I learned and I taught while I was working as a business lecturer really, um, you know, really helped me to, um, yeah, just helped me in developing my own business. Um, but I think the main thing for me and the main driver for me in my business has been my faith. Um, but I'll, I'll jump straight in and I'll share these seven powerful um, keys with you. And then you can tell me, you know, how they resonate and, um, yeah, and, and whether you guys have any um, keys or secrets um, to your own success. Um, but one of the first things and uh, key number one is um, write the vision, make it plain so he who reads it can run with it. And that's a quote from Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. Anybody know that verse? No. no. Okay, so I find the bit, um, even though I taught business, I studied business and marketing, so I have a postgraduate degree in business. Um, but for me, the truth is the Bible has been my best business guide. Um, you know, and that the Bible actually contains some very, very powerful tools for running a business. So um, my first key, yeah. my mean. first key. Yeah. When, is, when you go it. Sorry. OK, I thought someone else was uh, asking me something. So my first key is um, and key number one is write the vision and make it plain so that he who reads it can run with it. So in other words, you have to have a great business plan. You have to have a great vision and you have to be able to communicate that vision, um, you know, to yourself and to your team and to your bank manager, um, you know, and anyone who has an interest in the business. So my vision, when I first started the Silverfish Company in 2002, my vision was... Um, simply to um, make Bible inspired jewellery as a way of sharing my faith. So some of you can see the jewellery I'm wearing. I'm not wearing too many pieces tonight, but I'm wearing my Jesus fish, which was actually my very, very first design. And I'm wearing some Jesus fish earrings. Um, so that was the first key that drove me. So I wrote my vision down. It's important to have a powerful vision statement. You know, what is it you wanted to do? Um, oh, yes, you're wearing a pin as well. Very good. <laughs> Thank you, Janetti. So, yeah, 
it was simply about you know making great quality um bible inspired i don't use the word christian jewelry because i want my jewelry to be for everyone um but it is inspired by the bible and so my my tagline is exquisite designs in silver and gold inspired by the bible and i encourage people to wear the jewelry as witness pieces as a way to share reflect our faith and to aid our own personal meditation on on the scriptures so that was my original vision and um my idea was i would share my christian jewelry all over my sorry my bible inspired jewelry um, all over the world which I do through my website and um, you know through my travels which I'll come into so if you want to make a note of that key number one is write the vision and make it plain so that he who reads it can run with it um, but the other thing you have to do when you're writing your vision is you have to define your own success so what will I look like when I'm successful? What will my business look like when it's successful? And we have to define our own success. Now, a lot of people I meet in business, they say to me, oh, when I make a million pounds or 10 million, my business will be successful. And most people I meet define their success in terms of money. And it's rare to meet people who, you know, who don't actually do that. Uh, but for me, um, my success was, would always be um, that my business would um, make a difference in people's lives. You know, I always just wanted to make a difference. I wanted to raise my family well. And I wanted, to, I wanted my business to make a difference. Um, and so that brings me on to my next key, which is actually about purpose, because um, your success will be the fulfilling of your purpose. Do you know what I mean? So purpose is my second key. So as I say, um, I think as a mother that raising our children well is, is a key um, purpose. But when you're driven by purpose, um, you know, that, that's what keeps you going. So for me, my purpose was this business is going to make a difference to people's lives. So after about seven years of running the Silverfish Company, um, I felt God saying to me, OK, Norma, it's time for you to, you know, making jewellery has changed your life. And now it's time for you to make jewellery change lives for other people. So that's when my charity, Treasured Foundation, was actually born. And um, in terms of achieving the purpose, um, the very first thing I did was a, a project with the Salvation Army where I, I trained about 12 unemployed young people um, at my workshops in Birmingham. And I've actually, I, I did a count the other day, a body count, and I noticed I've actually trained, um, I think over 30 people have worked with me in some uh, capacity, whether helping to sell up my exhibitions or being trained at my workshops. So over 30 people in the UK and over 275 people I've trained overseas. I've done projects in Haiti, uh, two in India where I worked with women rescued from prostitution, two in Nigeria. Uh, last year I went to Grenada, I trained 100 um, mainly school children, 88 school children and 12 adults. So that for me is my success, you know, um, training people. So when I work overseas, I'm working with the poor and I'm giving them um, the skills, the tools and the means of an income. Uh, the other thing I'm doing is I'm sharing the gospel with them. So, you know, I tell them, you know, I do this because I'm a Christian. And if they want to be a Christian, they can simply pray and ask Jesus to come into their hearts and be their friend. And they will. So I'm not a heavy kind of Bible bashing preacher, but I do know that, um, you know, having a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ is a, is a major um, is a major key to kind of who I am um as a person and it's something um that kind of you know changed my life and it's something i recommend everywhere i go 
So, you know, for those who don't have that relationship um, with, with Christ or with God, um, maybe that's something we can discuss another time. So that for me is my purpose. And, you know, um, I meet a lot of people who say to me, people in business who work really, really hard and they say, yes, after I've made 10 millions or whatever, however amount of millions, then I really want to start a charity and I really want to help people. And that always gets me thinking because when I started my charity, I never, you know, I never had much money. I was approached by the Salvation Army and they asked, they offered to um, fund the training of 12 young people at my workshop. And then other charities simply approached me and asked me to get involved. And all I did was just, I always kept an open heart and I just always said yes. And I let God do the fundraising and God take care of the finances. And somehow everything fell into place. So um, the Charity Commission contacted me at one point and they said, we've seen your website, which is called um, treasuredfoundation.org. And um, the projects that you're involved in look like these are all multi-million pound projects, but we only see, you know, a few thousand pounds going through your account so where does all that money come from? You know, how did you build these projects? Where are the millions? <laughs> where are you hiding the money? And I said to them, you know, all of the projects that you're seeing, these are all partnerships. I don't own any of the land. I don't own the buildings. Um, but I work with other charities and what I do as a humble jewellery designer is I offer a five day intensive course in jewellery making. So I give the tools and the training and somehow with everybody working together, God makes it work. Angela, hi, lovely to see you. <laughs> somehow God, you know, makes it all work. And so um, they said, oh, well, you know, we commend you, they said, because not many people, um, and this is the Charity Commission told me this, they said, most people, unless they have a deed of ownership for the land that they're investing in, they will not invest a penny in other people's charities. And they said, that's why there are so many charities, everybody's doing their own thing, and other and people do not really help other charities you know unless they own the land and I said well if that's the case what they're doing isn't charity it must be some sort of colonization if they want to own the land that's colonization that's not charity um, so now um, I work with an organization called Amical Arts which is um, based in um, Haiti and you can see some of the beautiful artwork behind me. I'll just show some of the artwork in my lounge. <laughs> and um, so Amical Arts is a project uh, founded by um, the Haitian artist Prince Nello to develop a creative academy for um, children aged 5 to 25 in Haiti. So that project is very close to my heart at the moment and hopefully that will be, as I say, my last overseas project, I went to Grenada, I trained 100 people there in Grenada in October um, and I'm hoping my next project will be um, a trip to Haiti to actually work with um, the children from the Amical project. So that is all about my purpose and I'm grateful that God has allowed me to... Um, yeah, to really sow into other people's lives. You know, the mission of my charity is simple, simply make jewellery change lives. So I make jewellery with my hands and um, I give people the tools and the training. And I'm privileged to see them fall in love with Jesus because they tell me no one ever gives us anything especially when I went to India and I worked with women rescued from prostitution. They said, no one ever gives us anything unless they want to abuse us. But they said, you know, you've given us these tools and you've given us this training. And they say, we've never met Jesus, but we see Jesus in you. And they're like, we want this Jesus simply because I turn up. So for me, that is the joy of, um, you know, that is the joy, that is the success, that is the achievement of my purpose, um, that I've had a chance to be part of these projects worth millions and millions of pounds. And yet I, I haven't, you know, there isn't millions in my bank, but somehow 
these projects exist and um you know so all glory to god so i've learned that it isn't really about the amount of money but it is about um you know having a clear vision and it's about purpose um so when i first started the silver fish company um the way it started i was leading a bible study at my church called discovering god's plan for your life you know this is back in um 2002 or before 2002 actually uh, probably 2001 so i was leading this bible study it's about 20 women uh, it's a bible study on discovering god's plan for your life and i shared with the woman that god's plan is often like a hidden talent you know something deeply buried that you've always wanted to do um it might be a passion but for me the key thing was that it would fit in with god's plan for the world and can anybody tell me what god's plan for the world is anybody know sure. Sure. Did somebody say serve? Serve and pass on his message. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Was that Janetti? Well done. Of course. Spot on. <laughs> That's what I'm doing, honey. Absolutely. Absolutely. So my, um, my thing was during that Bible study that if that thing, that passion in your heart, if it fits in with God's plan for the world, which is, you know, to, mm -hmm. to see his kingdom come, you know, in his kingdom, um, mm -hmm building the kingdom of god some people think oh we're just going to die and go to heaven and then we'll be in the kingdom but i believe that our purpose on earth is to build god's kingdom right here right now to make this world a better place for as many people as possible so that's what i try to do it's all about building the kingdom and praise god the jewelry has given me um, a way to do that so when I go I can give them the tools the training the means of an income but I also work with charities that provide you know clean water food healthcare, education um, preaching the gospel all of these things have to work together so it's really all about um, in building the kingdom we need um, you know we need really good partners we need to work together and that's what i like about bame because we're working together to um, of course make our business better for uh, the black community so that was my second key that's all about purpose um, so god's purpose is will for your life it might be your talents um, there's another scripture that i want to give you in proverbs it says many are the plans of a man's heart but god's purpose will prevail god's purpose will prevail so um in terms of your purpose which is the second key you know we can all come up with great ideas as i say i used to teach business studies and i taught 16 to 19 year olds and they always had the most wonderful ideas but I'm here to tell you if it's not God's idea, it might not be, you know, it might not be the right thing to do. So, um, yeah, so for me, um, as I say, the Bible has been um, a wonderful guide for me. Um, I'm always very prayerful about everything I do. And I say, Lord, you know, you tell me what to do today. You tell me how to do it. You tell me what to make. You tell me how to make it. And um, that has been, um, and that, that purpose has been a, a major key in my success. Um, so I'll give you another scripture. The plans of the Lord stand forever and the purpose of his heart for all generations. Um, and at the moment, one of another key success for me, and again, all glory to God, I'm so grateful. My youngest son, Daniel, he's 20. He's my latest apprentice. As I say, I've worked with over 30 young people in my workshops in Birmingham over the 18 years. And I'm so glad I've got three children. Um, but I'm so glad one of them has decided to come into the jewellery trade and is working with me. Because to me, you know, that is like legacy. Um, and yes, I've passed on my jewellery skills to hundreds of people with the people mm -hmm. overseas and in the UK, but to, um, you know, to pass my jewellery skills on to my own son, that is 
I'm just really grateful for that. That's a huge blessing. So again, all glory to God. Um, I, I've also trained, um, which I haven't added to my count, you know, in Birmingham, I do therapeutic uh, jewellery workshops as well. Um, and again, I've trained hundreds of people uh, in the UK who've taken part in my therapeutic um, silver and bead jewellery workshops. So passing on the skills, um, that's all about legacy. And um, when it says the purpose of the Lord stands for generations, I hope that some of the people, especially in India and Africa, you know, the poor countries, I hope that they'll pass it on to their children. And in this way, um, God's purpose will stand for many generations. So key number three is passion. Okay. Um, and passion for me is simply about enjoying the work that you do and loving the work that you do. And there is a saying that goes, if you love what you do, then you don't have to work a day in your life. Um, I think for me personally, it's important that I enjoy my work. And I'm very fortunate that, you know, jewelry making is something I do it as a hobby because when I'm not, you know, working, I'm still making jewelry just for fun, you know. <laughs> and the truth is some of my best selling pieces have been the pieces that I've made just for fun, just for me. And then I'll go to an exhibition and I'm wearing it and somebody will say, well, that's unusual. I say, well, that, this is a, a personal piece that I made for myself. And people will say, oh, I want that. And I have to take it off and, and sell it to them. <laughs> so, um, yeah, some of my best selling pieces have been pieces that I thought this will never sell, but I just want to make it because it's just, I'm just having a great time uh, making it. Um, so yeah, the passion and loving what you do. And I think if you love what you do, the passion will, um, that will somehow come across in your, in your work. Um, I'll give you another verse um, from Ecclesiastics. This is Ecclesiastics 3.13, um, where it says there's nothing better than to eat, drink and enjoy the fruit. Um, there's nothing better to eat, than to eat and drink and to enjoy your labor. This is a gift from God. Okay, so when we enjoy our work, we can happily eat, drink, you know, and simply enjoy our work. But some people interpret that as enjoying uh, the fruit of your labor. And I think, I think this might be truer of men than it is of women, because I know some men will tell me it's not really about enjoying the job, and they don't enjoy their work, which I personally find sad because I have to enjoy my work. Otherwise, I'd be depressed. I wouldn't be able mm. to get out of bed and do it every day. But some people interpret that as eat, drink and enjoy the fruits of your labor. So in other words, they see it as, you know, the fruit of your labor is your house, is your holidays, is um, sending your kids to a good school. And I know for a lot of people, enjoying the fruit of the labor is just as important as enjoying the labor. And I'm sure there's nothing wrong with that. So, and I'll give you both of those keys. I'd, I'll say you have to enjoy your labor and enjoy the fruits of your labor as well okay and this is a blessing from the lord and you know everyone has a right to enjoy their labor and enjoy the fruit of their labor and this um as it says in the bible this is a gift from god okay somebody sending me a scripture um okay somebody sending me a scripture i thought it would, might be one of you but anyway um moving on um the fourth key is integrity. So for those who have only just jumped on, I'm discuss discussing um, seven powerful keys to business success. So the fourth key is integrity. Um, I work in the jewellery trade, so I'm working with silver and gold. And basically, you have to be honest. You know, if you're not honest, if you, um, um, you know, if you steal people's gold or whatever, um, you're not going to succeed. So integrity is, is key to your business. Um, and I'll give you a scripture. The integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. 
So in business, obviously, your reputation is key. I've been in business for 18 years. People come to me because obviously I make great, great jewellery, but a lot of my customers are repeat customers. So they know that I, I made great jewellery at a fair price. Um, I delivered on time. Um, all of these things. Um, so we have to try and build integrity into our business because, you know, um, nothing built on, um, if it's built on dishonesty, then it's not going to stand. Okay, key number five is faith. And again, um, as I said at the beginning, uh, my faith has been my key driver in starting the business and in continuing the business. And there's a wonderful verse in the New Testament. If you have faith as a mustard seed, um, you will say to the mountain, move and it will, and nothing will be impossible for you. Um, so in my business, there's been some, uh, there's been a lot of highs, there's been lows, there's been times when I've just had no money to pay my staff and I've been like, Lord, how am I going to pay the people? How am I going to pay myself? Um, but I'm here to tell you, God has always provided and I've always believed. He's always, the minute I pray, he just gives me that peace, Norma, don't worry, this has been okay and he's really he's rescued me from from some situations I, I can't even go into because we'd be here all night and some people have to go <laughs> but he's always provided and um and one of the reasons I love doing the the charity work that I do there's another verse that says he who gives to the poor lends to the Lord lends to the Lord, lends to the Lord. but he who gives to the rich will be poor did you know that so that is the opposite. You know, sometimes I go to churches and I hear them saying, oh, if you give a thousand pounds now, you're going to be rich like me. And there's a, this millionaire preacher saying, if you want to be rich, give me a million pounds or give me a thousand pounds and I'll pray over you and you'll be rich. That's not what the Bible says, guys. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says he who gives to the poor lends to the Lord. OK, but he who gives to the rich will be poor. So I don't give to the rich preachers when they say, give me a thousand pounds and I'll pray for you and you'll be rich like me. I go, really? That's not what my Bible says. My Bible says he who gives to the poor lends to the Lord. But if you give your money to the rich, you're going to be poor. So I don't give to the rich charities, you know, the big names like the Oxfam, the Red Cross. And we all, we've heard the bad stories and things that they've been up to. But I work with local people on the ground you know I go and I see the projects myself and I work with local people who are passionate about helping their own people and I don't work with the big um, I call them colonialist um, NGOs who are really land grabbing and um, you know I'm sure some of them obviously there's some people doing some great work but there's um, I don't think they need my money but I think the poor need my money so that's why I work with um, small local charities who don't have a big name and um, I know that I'm giving my my gift straight into their hand or I go myself and I give the tools to the woman myself and um, in that way I believe I'm, I'm giving to the Lord and I believe the scripture says when you give to the poor you lend to the Lord that means that God is always going to give back to you He's always going to give back to you. Okay. And also in sharing my skills, um, you know, I share some yes. of my best designs. I share some of my best techniques. And even the training that I do in England, you know, um, I've even trained some of my own competitors. I know some of the shows I do now, some, um, I know women who've started their own jewellery companies and they're now come, come into the exhibitions and they're in competition with me. <laughs> and um, I just say, that's okay. That's great. Because, um, you know, the Bible says freely you've received, so freely you must give. And the more I give and the more I inspire other people, even if they then come and set up in competition with me, you know, God will always give back to me because um, freely I've received and freely I must give. OK, so that that's all about faith. You have to believe in in um, yourself, believe in your pro product. You know, some of the most successful businesses, even if they're not um, based on um, faith like mine, my business is based on my Christian faith. But the most successful businesses are people who are passionate 
about what they're doing. They 100% believe that their product is, you know, this is what's going to save the world. And you have to have that belief. You have to have that faith. And that's what's going to drive you. That's what's going to get you up in the morning. The world needs this. I know that the world needs my inspirational jewellery. Um, everybody needs inspiration. Um, and um, somebody said to me once, um, I um, was talking to her about one of my mission trips and she said to me, Norma, you really believe that making jewellery is going to save the world, don't you? <laughs> and I said, yes, actually I do. <laughs> you know, because I'm that passionate and I'm and I believe that God has given me this mission to really make jewellery um, change lives and he's done it so far for the last 18 years and I'm sure he'll continue to use me um, in this way um, that brings me to my sixth key which is that we have to persevere and that basically means never give up and I'll give you another scripture um, do not grow weary in doing good because in due time you will reap a harvest if you never give up Okay, so um, I've, as I said, I've been through some tough times. There's been highs and lows. Um, in 2012, for example, my workshop was broken into. I was cleaned out. Everything was gone. And I kind of felt like giving up at that point. And I felt, well, maybe God wants me to give up because all my jewelry has gone and my workshop's been trashed. And um, it was my worst nightmare coming back from an exhibition I'd been exhibiting down in Plymouth got back from Plymouth had a really good show the funny thing about that week in Plymouth I just couldn't sleep um you know I, I couldn't sleep and I didn't know why something was just bothering me um and I guess it must have been you know some sort of premonition coming that something bad that something was was going to happen I got back to Birmingham you know my window had been broken open uh, the window was still open actually so <laughs> um the window to the workshop was open um everything was trashed everything was gone it was my worst nightmare because this business has been so personal and i make the jewelry with my hands myself and suddenly it had all it was all gone um so yeah i felt like giving up at that time um i must admit but somehow i persevered um, for example, that, that day I got on the phone and I had some exhibitions coming up and I cancelled everything. I said, well, I've got no stock. I've got nothing to sell. Um, I'm going to have to cancel. And then that night I went to sleep and I, you know, I kind of prayed about things and I felt God saying, on cancel all your cancellations because you're going to carry on. <laughs> so yeah the next day I got I got up and I said you know I called you yesterday and I cancelled uh, my exhibition space well actually I need to uncancel that because I'm going to be there by God's grace and um, I think I locked myself on all my staff my staff I had uh, my two staff at the time they were both in tears because they both thought they were out of a job and they both sat there crying crying for me crying for themselves and I said, um, guys, don't worry. You're not out of a job. You're on overtime. <laughs> I said, you're on overtime. We're going to be working hard to make all the stock back. So we worked. I locked myself in the workshop some nights till three in the morning, um, you know, working and um, getting uh, back on track. And by God's grace, we, um, we got through that. So perseverance is a major, major key. So, um, yeah, that verse is Galatians 6, verse 9. Um, Never grow weary in doing good because in due time you will reap a harvest if you never give up. So I just want to encourage you guys tonight to never give up on your businesses. I know um, uh, most of you, as I say, are in business, um, employing people or you're self-employed. But if you really believe in what you do, if you really believe that this is God's purpose, um, then don't give up. Now, purpose and um, purpose is constant, but passions and things that interest you can change. 
you know um, so for example I started off um, making just silver jewelry and I'm in the process now of changing the company name to the gold and silver fish company um, because we've gone into doing um, much more gold and we're going into gold in a big way so I wanted to express that in the name but when I started I was really passionate about silver and I never thought I would um, move into gold but now um, you know um, obviously that's just the way um, the passion has, has taken me and now um, we are becoming the gold and silver fish company and um, we're doing much more gold um, investing more heavily in um, in gold and the precious stones the diamonds and um, you know all of the precious gemstones which I suppose is um, it's probably natural because um, in the Bible it says the walls of the kingdom of heaven um, are set with all kinds of precious stones, you know, and the streets are paved with gold. So if I'm building the kingdom, it's probably natural that I would be working in, in gold and with precious stones because it's what heaven is made out of. And if I'm trying to build heaven on earth and to reflect the kingdom of heaven, then... Um, I suppose it's natural that my stock should um, reflect the kingdom of heaven as well. So that's a very exciting development for me, working in uh, gold, um, 18 karat gold, uh, the diamonds and more high-end um, jewellery. Um, I'm very excited about that. And that's been almost a change of um, passion. And that's how passions can develop. So your, your passion doesn't have to be set in stone. You know, be flexible enough to adapt with uh, the marketplace. Don't be a dinosaur. Don't say, oh, this is the way I've always done things. You know, um, people are surprised that I work with gold because I started out being called the silver fish company and they're like, Oh, you do gold. That's, that's surprising. Um, so, um, you know, we just have to be flexible enough to follow our passion and um, to let our passion grow and expand and uh, to always let the vision um, expand as well. And my final key, my seventh key is people. Um, you know, they, there is a saying, if you want to move quickly, go alone. But if you want to go the distance, take a team. And the very first thing that Jesus did when he started his ministry on earth is that he, um, he, d he built a team, he developed a team. So the first thing he did, he went out and he called his disciples. Um, he met Peter and John and James and all the disciples. And he said to them, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And he t chose 12 very ordinary guys, you know, uh, most of them were fishermen like Peter um you know um so there were ordinary guys and jesus said follow me i'll make you fishers of men and so he went about building his team he chose 12 people and through those 12 people he changed the world so team building i don't have a big team um you know but that's okay the bible says where two or three are gathered in my name i'm there with them um, so I don't think it's about the numbers necessarily, but um, I always pray that God will bring me alongside, you know, the right people, people who can help um, to develop this vision, people who will um, feel passionately about what we're trying to achieve, and also people who have a heart for the charity work, you know, um, I don't want to work with people who are selfish, I want to work with people who um care about other people and care about making the world a better place through through what we're trying to do so um yeah having um the right team is important um i recently engaged a new accountant through through bame and i'm i'm grateful for that um you know um and it's been good connecting with you lovely people <laughs> and um but yeah, having the right people on board um, has really been key for me. Um, people that I can work with. Um, I work quite well with young people in the workshop because I find that they're more teachable. 
and I mentioned that my youngest son is my latest apprentice. In the future, I'd like to develop the um, the training of young people at my workshop in Birmingham. I'm hoping that we will be, um, you know, find funding um, as a training workshop to train more people, especially people of Caribbean descent who have been um, systematically, um, you know, disadvantaged by um, the system that we live in and for some young people it's, it's it can be very very hard um, certainly to get into the jewelry trade it's a very um, the, the jewelry quarter was founded by the Jewish community of Birmingham um, a couple of hundred years ago and when I first moved to the jewelry quarter and I opened my shop 18 years ago I had a shop for, for 12 years and people told me that a black person would be arrested on sight um, just for walking around the jewelry quarter about 30 years ago and I find that shocking and um, most of the skills are passed down in families so it's actually quite hard for black young young people to um, you know to get into the trade and to get trained because the university is very expensive and then even if you get into the university you need ten thousand pounds worth of tools to start um, to start working with you know working with silver and gold and precious metals so i really i am praying that god will um help me to develop the um the business so i can train more young people um perhaps through getting funding um so i can take them on whether as apprentice or i'm not sure how exactly the training will, will work but um you know i want them to be paid while while they're trained so um I'm just praying um, that God will develop that and also I'm hoping to develop our project in Haiti and to develop more training workshops in especially in the Caribbean. I mentioned I've been to obviously I've been to Haiti but I've been to India twice, I've been to Nigeria twice but God has really put the Caribbean on my heart that that's really where um, I should develop uh, my training workshops and you know maybe that's just natural because obviously I'm from Caribbean descent and at one point I thought I'd work with people all over the world I was um, you know asked to go to Eastern Europe at one point but that didn't quite work out um, but yeah um, the Caribbean is just growing in my heart and it's particularly the project in Haiti where we have a hundred children um, so um yeah that's all about people so those are my seven keys guys my seven powerful keys for business success these are the keys that have worked for me so uh one is right the vision two is purpose three is passion four is integrity uh five is faith six is perseverance and seven is people um and that's um that's my seven keys guys so i hope you've um you know i hope there'll be something that you can take away and something yeah. that you can use in the developing of your own um enterprise thank you for listening <laughs> norma norma thank you let's just let's, let's applaud you norma that that was so so inspirational um for me and i'm sure for everyone else um just sharing your journey and uh, and uh, and the, the word of, of the keys that the perseverance for me is what mm -hmm. actually uh as sort of resonate with me because mm -hmm. it is so easy so easy and you know when i heard the you know what happened in 2012 and yeah it would have been easy to have just given up and why uh, this you know maybe this is a message mm -hmm. but by persevering it shows uh, what 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 can come from that by just not giving up uh, yeah. uh, you know thank you so much for sharing that i want to open the floor and and i'm conscious that lynn is going to have to go soon so lynn, if you've got any questions um um yeah. this is an opportunity to 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 ask before you go and, and then I'd like anyone else. And I, I believe there is a chat that's going on. Carol's managing the chat. So if you don't want to speak, yeah. please put your questions in the chat and, and Carol will, will read that back for us. Uh, Lean over uh, to you if you've got any questions. Yeah, I mean, what I'd like to say, I've known Norma now for, um, gosh, 
nearly 40 years. <laughs> really? <laughs> she didn't get as long as you, Marcia. <laughs> No, she's not that old. I'm only 21, so how do you... It's 20 years. But we've been friends for a long time. A long time. So I I know the story, and I know... um, And um, Norma knows this, and she won't mind this, and I hope she doesn't get embarrassed by this. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, she's been a good friend, and, um, and... I've, I've seen where she actually she come from and obviously started the business. I've seen the highs and the lows and the perseverance. And um, her faith, as she said, has played a, a big part in her being who she is. And, um, and also helped to engage with her clients and friends as well. And what you see is what you get. Um, I'm just very proud of her, what she's achieved. Mm. And, Thank um, you, dear. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> so supporting her is, is easy, is absolutely easy. And I would ask you all basically to, to support her, support each other actually as well. I mean, I'm new to BAME, uh, to be honest. I, I'd forgotten it was a BAME event. And I came on to Zoom to support Norma. Um, BAME was secondary, but obviously I'll, I'll learn more about that later on. Um, but yeah, all the points that she pointed out and related it to each, it, her life story and obviously her journey is important. I uh, just want to hit normal, you said people, your mm-hmm. staff, and obviously, and I know you've had a lot of support as well from um, friends and also family as well. As yeah, absolutely. You, which I think yeah. is, is important for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm to, grateful to my family yeah. And, yeah. and to God. <laughs> you know? I'm as grateful. Well. Um, and, and that's all really I want to say because I'll be here all night and Norman knows what I'm like. Um, but yeah, that's what I, that's what I want to say. Yeah. But, and I'm also, I've also got pieces of a jewellery which are fantastic. And I think I was one of the first recipients you. of Norman's jewellery. Well, I, I think you I probably were like, from, yeah, apart was. from maybe Malika. Yeah, <laughs> no. Yes, you know. Jewelry. And it's, yeah. it's been great to see her evolve. Hi Malika, love you loads. Hi beautiful. Uh, <laughs> so that's all I want to say and I'm glad to be a supporter and a friend. Um, yeah, wonderful. Oh, oh, thank you then. Thanks dear. I'll call, can I call you, you later? Norma, Norma, I think. Yeah. All right. Okay darling. Yeah. Call you later. Yeah. Okay. Bye um, everyone. Bye. 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 Nice to bye. see you. Bye. Lots of love. Bye. 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 No, Norma, a, a quick question. Um, uh, what, what is I wanted to ask? What is the significance of the word fish in 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 your business name? Because I know it started off as, as the silver fish jewelry, yeah, and you're now yeah. saying it's going to be the gold and silver fish jewelry. What's yeah. the significance in the, the the fish? In the fish. So, does anybody else want to answer that, Janetti? I see you smiling. <laughs> <laughs> It's not my floor, darling. I chat oh, it Oh, okay. Up. So the fish was the original symbol that Christians used. It predates the cross, and it's an acronym um, from the Greek word ichthus, which means Jesus, Saviour, God's Son. <laughs> so it was a secret sign of Christians, wow. which is still used today. So, yeah, when you see the fish, you might see it on the back of people's cars. It means it's normally used by born-again Christians as a secret sign. Because of all the persecution. Oh, thank you, Michelle. I didn't know that. Yeah. When Christians were persecuted, that's yeah. right. We were persecuted. We were fed to the lions, a bit like black people today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we had a secret sign, which is the fish, so we could recognize each other. Yeah. Oh, thank you. There you go. You didn't need uh, me. At all. Carol, I can see yeah. Carol's hand. I think Carol's yeah. got some questions. From the chat, P. Thompson has got a hand raised. Hello. Oh, oh no, sorry, I was I was just waving. Sorry. Oh hi, <laughs> Hi, you're right. Hi, yeah. Uh, I can't yeah, seem to I... see you. Oh, I can't on see one your second. picture. Um, you, you, may, you may have to scroll your screen across, um, Norma. Can you see I me now? You... Sorry. Yes. yes. You yes. did ask the question though. Oh, there. Yes, I can see you. Yeah. Yeah, I can see you. 
I am in Asda. <laughs> yeah, I'm in Asda. <laughs> but no, I was, I was, I was, I was listening from home, and then um, I was listening in the car on the way up, and then of course um, we've just arrived. But yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed that. That was really, really good. Uh, very informative um, and quite interesting. And I'm just looking forward to more. Yeah, I hope so. I hope I can, you know, keep you guys posted in um, our future developments, especially the charity work and um, the work with the Amical Project in Haiti, which is very close to my heart. Um, I have got a fundraising page on Just Giving for raising funds for Amical at the moment. So if anybody wants to support um, my latest charitable project, they can go to that. And this is to develop the Creative Academy for Disadvantaged Children in Haiti, Definitely. age 5 to 25. So click on Just Giving. It's Amical Arts. You may have seen uh -huh. the link. I've been posting it in BAME and in all the groups. So do click on that and, you know, Definitely. get whatever you can afford. Even if it's just a pound, it will make a yeah. difference to the children. No, Norma, uh -huh. can you also get, um, add some information about the, the sponsorship of children? Oh, yeah. And you can sponsor a child from just... Um, well, it was just £10 a month, but I've now said if you want to sponsor them from just £5 a month, you can do that. You can set up a standing okay. order in the bank okay. and I'll give you the details. Um, or I can, I can give you a form or I can just send you the details and set it up yourself um, and from just five pounds a month now you can sponsor a child and keep in touch with them and um, you know see how the project develops so we're trying to there's about 100 children on the project we're trying to provide food um, school feed and art supplies and eventually we're trying to actually build a permanent um, you know, training um, a permanent academy, but it will also be, it'll be an art gallery, it'll be a church, it'll be more like a civic centre, um, a building that's, that's in the middle of the village and can be used for everything, a school, a place of worship, no, a gallery. Norma? Yeah? No, no, Norma, could you just, before we start losing people, give um, a, um, a methods of contacting you? Uh, oh yeah, um, sure. In addition to... To the just giving how else could people get in touch with you so you can go on my website which is www.silverfishjewelry.co.uk to buy your silver and gold jewelry or you can commission me i do commissions as well um so that is um silverfishjewelry.co.uk you can buy online um to support mm -hmm. amical you can go to amicalartsinternational.com or you can go to i don't just know if you remember I don't know if you remember, Norma, um, years ago, years ago, um, I asked you, I actually had a pair of um, earrings commissioned for my 40th birthday. Oh, right. Um, they were the, um, the, the fish. Oh, the fish, they yes. They were actually uh, just the wire fish that went through my ears. Oh, good, yes. That's I'm wearing some of those tonight, yeah. 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 Yeah, my signature fish. Oh, own. wonderful. Well birthday. done. Thank you for your support. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd forgotten. Hi, Jennifer. Jennifer? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, well done and congratulations. Thank and, you. Uh, you really well. Um, and obviously, we all appreciate your support with BAME. Um, but a question I need to ask. Um, so, I'm the um, International Relations Officer for Unison. And we yeah. look at international issues around the world. Yeah. So what can Unison do to influence a change from the AIT government um, in terms of what's their perspective and what can we do in terms of, you know, actioning change in the situation? Well, I think the way to bring change in Haiti personally is to do what I'm doing now, which is to work with the local Haitians themselves. And, and I say that because um, you, most of you know about the earthquake in 2010, where they say over 360,000 people died in that earthquake. Okay, mm -hmm. 13 billion pounds has been collected for Haiti by the major charities, people like Red Cross, Op fam and it hasn't made a difference to the local people they're saying you know where is that money they have 13 billion you know haiti's only an island 
only I think something like 26 million people live there but 13 billion has been collected by major charities and the Haitian people cannot tell you where the money is you know they still don't have education some of them don't have food they don't have housing so where are the billions everybody's asking where are the billions people like Hillary Clinton for example has a charity uh, supposedly raising money in Haiti called the Clinton Foundation and that money everybody says it disappeared people think she used it for her presidential campaign money that was raised for Haiti the Haitians have not seen a penny and these people have not been held to account not, sorry Norman, so, but is there, is there an organization in Haiti what's equivalent to the work that Unison does. There must be a body, a charitable body, that actually can feed back to the government to implement changes. Um, I need to find out about that. I mean, I don't, I avoid the major charities now because most of them, I think they're colonialists. Uh, they're land grabbing. They won't invest a penny without a deed of ownership for the land. For example, when I was there in 2011, I went to train a group of people who were paralyzed by the earthquake. And I asked, why is the money not invested? Why are people still living in tents? And they said, um, even though they'd collected billions, and they said it's because the Haitian government won't give us a deed of ownership for the land. And, um, and we won't invest a penny unless we own the land. And I said to them, that's not charity. I'm here to tell you that's colonialism. And um, so what are you going to do with that money? It just sits in the bank until you guys spend it on paying your own salaries. You know, so okay. I was very outspoken. I don't deal with any of these large white organi uh, large um, foreign NGOs anymore. I'll contact you I, so we can talk. Yeah, but maybe we'll talk more um, if we can link with um, some local people. Because I am in contact with um, one of the people, he's Haitian, he's running for president in the 2022 elections. Um, so I can ask some of um, the politicians who we're working with and um, I'm sure we can point you in the right direction. Okay, thank you. Of, okay. Course, of course, this is, this is obviously, this is Norma's alleged interpretation of these um, other Events. companies. Um, so we do appreciate what you've said, Norma, you know, but for the purpose of others that may view this in future, we would just like to say this is not the overall BAME um, view. This These is are my personal, personal, this is my personal, personal experience visit, when I went yeah. there in, and for what my she visit. Has done yeah. In the campaign in excellent charitable work. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Carol, have we got any other questions in the chat? You need to mute. Carol, you're on mute. Carol. Yes. Carol. Hello. I saw myself muted. Um, <laughs> what I was going to say, just lots of compliments very inspirational comments in the chat and um and that includes me uh very inspiring norma thank and you so echo good. echo thank it's you so good to hear it backed up by your faith putting your faith in action that's wonderful thank you, you. thank you I have to endorse your you. seven pillars there norma because i myself just a little bit shorter than you been in my business since 2004 mm -hmm. and I certainly endorse all those seven pillars and, and some you know and they definitely work start the day the godly way and you'll be okay amen, amen. <laughs> just simple start amen. the day the godly way and you will be okay that's all amen. I say okay. um, I just want to say congratulations Norma for running a purpose purpose driven business Thank um, you. I look forward to seeing more and I will click on your link. Thank you. Okay. Um, Thank you. What else did I want to say? You know, as we all do business, and I mean, my reason for joining BIM is not necessarily for financial reasons, mm -hmm. as I said to Jennifer. And it's, it's, it's looking at what that true purpose is, how we could help our community. Yeah, you know? definitely. And uh, mm -hmm. when you do a protocol or service, sometimes it's what you do in the wider community is bigger than that, um, mm -hmm. that protocol or service. And I think you're definitely going in that direction. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Thank well, you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. 
Any, any other questions? Um, I mean, we've gone past seven o'clock, so uh, yeah. I know we may be losing people. Um, but any other questions before um, I sort of just sum up and give contact details about finding out more about Bain? Okay. okay, if we don't have any other questions, I, I just want to um, just to share again with those who are new new to this. Now, um, this um, audience with is 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 a platform that we provide to members of Bain to to share their journey, share their their their, their projects, share their business um, um, with. Uh, with the wider community, and uh, and it's an opportunity to learn more and to connect uh, with uh, with um, the people in the community. And um, if you want to know more about BAME, I said at the start that BAME is a membership, a membership organisation. It is fifty pounds a year to be a member, and with that, uh, uh, there are various benefits. Um, one with you have a Bay membership card, which gives you various discounts with uh, merchants that we have associated with Bain. We currently have about 200, 250 merchants, which all give various discounts um, um, to members of Bain. Uh, this platform here is a, is a free platform to members to come on and, uh, and um, although we, we schedule it for an hour, as you can see, it does go over, and if people wish to interact, it's it's an opportunity to continue talking. So um, learn more about BAME. Go on our website, or you can actually send in an email. Let me just get the correct email address because it has changed since I last written writ it down. So um, you can email BAME to this B A M E dot networking at gmail dot com. And uh, you just to find out more, find out more, you can actually go on our website, which is um, BAME Business Club. Sorry, BAME Business dot Club. That will give you more information about the membership and the aims and objectives of, of BAME. And if you wish to speak to someone um, in person by phone, um, if you've got inquiries around membership, then you can call Bill Brown, who is the vice chair, on 07906. 99492. So that's 07906-994192. If you have any other inquiries in regards to BAME, then you can you can uh, contact the chair, um, Jennifer McIntosh, on 07548-806-9192. So that's 75 So various um, formats that you can um, get in touch. Uh, there is also um, a, a, a WhatsApp group, which is a free WhatsApp group for any, any individuals interested in BAME um, and where we share a lot of information, um, um, provide sort of... Um, uh, conversational support and and uh, and and just keep uh, keep the, the the conversation going. So that is a free WhatsApp group for all who are interested in BAME and to to benefit from the 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 business club and the the other the other um, packages. It's about inquiring about the membership. So if anyone has any questions. If not, I'm going to thank you all. Thank you again, Norma Jean, for thank such an guys. inspirational talk. Okay, um, thank you. you know, um, the seven powerful keys to, um, to business success. And uh, and uh, and and for the the the, the 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 spiritual scriptures uh, that just help to reinforce those those messages. Uh, um, I've definitely has taken away something from that, and will just remind myself as I go through um, my journey, and especially when I feel, oh gosh, no one no one has my same passion. So, is it worth me carrying on? And um, yeah. 
I, it is. I know it is, but sometimes you do feel, oh, why, why? So thank you for just reminding me that perseverance is key. And uh, I want to thank you all for joining us and making this, this, this um, session um, the, as, as, as great as it's been. I mean, I've thoroughly enjoyed it and I hope you all have too. Okay, yeah. so don't forget to go on the website, guys, silverfishjewelry.com and amicalartsinternational.com and click on our Just Giving link and um, that will support um, the children at Amical Arts. Thank you so much. God bless you Thanks. all. Bye. Love Bye. you all. Bye. 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 Bye, Norm. Bye. Speak soon. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, Michelle. Bye. 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 Okay. Well done, Norma. So, oh, thank you. That was fun. <laughs>